So the sea is not always a good symbol in the Scripture. But I wouldn't overly worry about this. Uh, We're told in chapter 4 that there will be a sea, a sea of glass like crystal that's before the throne. All chaos, all risk, all death will be done away with. There will be no more drowning in the sea. There will be a new heaven and new earth where none of those things will exist. But what else will be there? Look at verse 2. And I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. A new Jerusalem will come. A new Jerusalem will come. A new heaven and, and earth needs a new Jerusalem because the present Jerusalem is not a holy city. It's not. It's not a holy city according to John in the book of Revelation. If we were to turn back to chapter 11, we would see the two witnesses who are proclaiming the word of the Lord, the, the beast, the false prophet, the dragon, make war against them and slay them. And this is what it says in chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is mystically called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Where was their Lord crucified? In Jerusalem. And what is it called? It's Sodom. It's, it's known for immorality. It's Egypt. It's in spiritual slavery. The first Jerusalem is no more. A new Jerusalem will come, which will be, verse 2, it will be a holy city. A holy city will descend from God. Notice that this is a city made by God. The city descends. People don't build it. It descends out of heaven from God. This is literally the city of God. The city which God has made for us to enjoy. If we were to look down a few verses in this chapter, the measurements of this city are given. Look down to verse 16. It says, The city, this new Jerusalem, is laid out as a square, and its length is as great as its width. And he measured the city with a rod. 1,500 miles. 1,500 miles. Its length and its width and its height are equal. That's a pretty big city, right? Its length, its width, and its height are 1,500 miles, 12,000 stadia. That's how long it is. To put that in perspective, uh, many of you have driven through Texas. Texas is a pretty big state. This is eight, over eight times the square mileage of Texas, this new Jerusalem which descends from heaven. It's coming. It is huge. It, it, this, these numbers may be symbolic, they may be figurative, but at least we can say this, that there is ample room in this city for all the saints of all time to dwell together with God. There is ample room in this city. A new Jerusalem will descend from God. And look what else. This is one of the best parts. Verse 3, God will dwell among us. Verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and He will dwell among them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself will be among them. This is the best part of the New Jerusalem. God will dwell among us. I mean, God could have said, I'm going to give you this great city. You will enjoy it forever. You can dwell there and praise me with thankful hearts forever, and I will sit back unseen and watch and, uh, and receive glory as I always have, the, the true invisible God. But the Lord says that He will dwell with us. He won't be off afar. He will come and dwell in this city. There is, there is no temple because the Lord God Himself is the temple in this city. He will dwell with us. God will dwell among us, 
and we shall enjoy a relationship with Him the likes of which we have never known. God will dwell with us. Look at verse 4. We get a little taste of what this will be like. Verse 4 says, He will dwell with us, among us. He will be our God. He Himself will be among them. And He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Every tear wiped away. God Himself will dry our tears. I'm sure when, when you hear that phrase, drying someone's tears, images come to your mind. The first that comes to my mind is, is Ella. When, uh, I, when she disobeys and has to get a spanking, and I, I, I take her away, and and going to hurt. Spankings hurt. And there are tears. But I hold her and wipe those tears away. And the, the discipline is needed. The pain is real, but it is short-lived. It is short-lived, but the impact of it goes on and hopefully produces holiness. God will say to us on that day, it is over. The pain is past. Joy is here forevermore because I am here forevermore. God will dwell with us and He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Look at the rest of verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain, for the first things have passed away. The first things will pass away. There will be no more death, no more mourning, crying, or pain, no more broken arms and legs, no more migraines, no more grief over children, no more worry about finances. I mean, you live in a city where gold is everywhere. No more cancer, no more fibromyalgia, no more diabetes, no more high blood pressure, no more bad backs or knees that need surgery or diets we have to worry about. No more persecution at work. No more hurtful words coming from people's mouths. No more obesity. No more selfishness. No more sin. The first things have passed away. They are no more. The first things have passed away. And look at what our Lord says. Verse 5. The one who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. God will make all things new. The old things, sin, death, corruption, are gone forever. Gone forever. Now God says, I will make all things new. It will be new. God will make all things new. No eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor mind fully imagined or fathomed what is coming in that statement. I will make all things new. Look what else he says in verse 5. And he said, write for, write, for these words are faithful and true. We get a little divine dictation here. John, take a letter. Write, write this down what I'm saying to you. Write, these words are faithful and true. Look at verse 6. What, it, what is he told to write? Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost.